Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen today. I titled this message for those who want to understand God's ways, for those who want to understand God's ways. But right now it's hard. I get it. So much trauma, so many people disappointed, uh, folks finding out that loved ones are dying or have died. Why, Lord, why do you allow this sort of thing to happen? I've heard this years and years of just folks complaining, angry, bitter, confused, resentful, turning their back on God. I don't understand God at times. I must admit, there are times where I'll say, I thought that this was going to happen this way. And I could have sworn or I was pretty certain. And then God did something totally different. Just when I just, just when I wanted to focus in on just the goodness of God, right? The joy of God, the peace of God, the wisdom of God. God says, oh, I'm more than just that. And then I read about the curses God puts on men and women and how God could have intervened, but chose not to. And the struggles that man and woman went through as a result of disobeying God. And then I think, well, wow, you know, God is, is pretty controlling in his own way, isn't he? And then I look and God says, no, he says, I gave man the opportunity to do what's right. And man chose to do something different, something that got him into trouble. I know this world better than he will ever know this world. And I know what the consequences are when man does something different. That's why I'm like the shepherd. I lead the sheep, but sometimes sheep go astray. God always has a reason why he does what he does, whether we agree or not. And sometimes he'll share those reasons and other times he won't. We're going to take a look at scriptures today, and I hope someone will be at peace because once again, I know that you're having problems understanding why God does what he does, but hang on and still draw near to him because when we don't draw near to the Lord, we just make matters worse for ourselves. Proverbs 9, 6 and 10, forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Let me say that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I want to understand what God is doing. And even if I don't understand some of the things, or maybe he's not going to reveal everything, the least I can do is sit quietly long enough to let the Holy Spirit speak into my spirit. Because it could be something that is about me or not about me. It could be about someone else. It could be something that the Lord wants to talk to me about, but I was too busy talking to everybody else. Trying to seek wisdom from everybody else, see? There is this healthy fear of the Lord that one should have because he is the one who created us, right? He is the one that gave us breath in our body. It would make sense to stand in awe of the one true God. Because without him, we would not be alive. In all our getting, we get what? understanding proverbs 16 16 through 17 how much better to get wisdom than gold so many people chasing after riches but what's the sense in having the riches but you don't have the wisdom to go along with managing those riches see some people aren't getting the monies that they keep praying about wishing for come on lord make me a millionaire a billionaire i want the uh, house on the hill i want that really nice car lord you know what my needs are i want to pay for this thing and that thing and you know can you just and the lord is saying that When I gave you a little bit, what did you do with that? When I told you 
to do this with your money. Do you recall what you did that made me upset? Come on. That made others around you upset. Why would the Lord keep giving big money? Not little money now. Come on. But why would he keep giving some folks big money and they can't even handle the little money? Hmm. How much better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. See, you're praying to the Lord. I need some understanding about this situation because right now I'm confused. I don't get it. I don't believe what's coming out of this woman or this man's mouth. Lord, I need some understanding as to who you are and how you operate, because my understanding is that you are a righteous God, a loving God, a kind God. But who's this God that curses? Who's this God that, you know, uh, just will move on his people to go to war? I mean, this is crazy to me. Well, God, he will speak to you. But once again, we've got to make time to allow him to speak. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Those who are upright, those who are righteous, those who are about doing well, doing good in life. They are that way because they make choices every single day not to partake in evil things, evil speaking, evil plans. They may even risk their jobs, their reputation. Because I'm not going to participate in evil. Part of understanding and knowing God is to be like him. To fight evil, not defend it, not to support it, but to fight it. This is evil. What this man is saying. I'm not saying he's evil. I'm saying that what he's saying is evil. The things that this man is doing. I'm not saying that once again, that he is a bad person. But what I am saying is that the things that he's doing is not what God would have us as believers do. So is he really a believer or not? Come on, that's somebody's question for our current leadership. And God says that I'm giving you this understanding as to who he is. He even used a close relative, a niece to explain to you who this current leader is in 2020. And for some of you all, you got some pretty good understanding because you work close to him. Or you know people who work close to him. Or you know people who grew up around him and his family. But yet you won't depart from evil. You know there's no evil in any form of dis uh, You know that there is evil in all sorts of discrimination. You know that. Doesn't matter the rhyme or reason. You know there's some evil to it. People have their motives. A lot of times it's for selfish gain, selfish interest. What about us? Forget about them. But yet you call yourself a believer. You see, there's believers that's giving the Christian faith a bad name. It's not so much sinners and Satanists and all these evil people out here. It's Christians themselves, people who claim to be about God's business, but yet you are dismiss evil practices evil work lord jesus and this is why some folks aren't getting the favor they may have once received favor but not any longer because the lord sees how you're wishy-washy the lord sees how you love money you see some folks that's what they are they are lovers of money they're gluttonous greedy Miserable human beings while they put on a false front, smiling, laughing, driving this and driving that and got nice homes and whatever else. But they're miserable because they don't have an understanding of God's ways. They don't seek to understand why God does what he does. Jesus, he missed you on double wool, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. I'm seeking the Lord. How are you doing that? I'm meditating. I'm sitting quiet. I'm looking in his scriptures. I'm talking to people who've been around for a long time. 
They've been there, they've done it, they've seen a movie, and they know God after a while. Yep, I know what God going to do with this situation. What are you going to do? He's going to allow a man to fall flat on his face. What? Mm -hmm. There's going to be some shaming, some embarrassment. There's going to be some lies and cover-ups. But deep down inside, that man is going to reap what he has sown. And a lot of times, if we as parents, if we don't get the message, the memo, God says, you'll get it when I deal with your children. Oh, no, not my kids. Oh, yes. We got a season coming up where so many people are going to lose their children. That's why they're fighting so hard about opening up these schools and so forth. They're going to lose their children. Not everybody is going to be able to send their child off to school and they come home and everything's going to be fine. Whether it's the COVID-19, this is nothing but the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whether it's the COVID-19 or a child just having an illness that was already present, losing out to that illness, there's going to be parents that's going to be saying, why God? I don't understand. That's why I say, see God, right? You get this understanding right now before you lose a child, before you hear about someone losing a child. You get this understanding right now. God tried to reach a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin. God tried to reach a sister or a brother, but they wanted to do their own thing. And God said, well, 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 if I can't get your attention this way, then how about I take your child? And the enemy comes in there and says, it's my pleasure. A powerful lesson has to be learned through the death of a child. Some of you all right now, you need to say, prepare my heart for what's ahead, Lord Jesus. You want to know God, you better know that other side to God. The enemy wants you, yes, the enemy or enemies want you just to focus on what they consider to be the weak part of God, the watered down part of God, the God where, you know, those biblical stories from childhood, Sunday school. God says, grow up. There's another side to them that some folks are going to be introduced to. I hate once again to be the prophet of doom and gloom, but there's going to be that other side to the Lord that these celebrities are going to be like, no, no, no. I didn't want to learn about God this way. And the Lord said, but when my people were sitting there and simply talking to you, you wanted to argue, you wanted to defend, you wanted to ignore. Once again, we got people who are grieving. They're upset. They're bitter. They're angry because of what God already did to them, already did to people who they love. But because they don't understand the ways of God, they don't understand that sometimes you got to lose one to save many. They just chalk it up as this is an evil God. This is a God I want nothing to do with. But there are those who God has called and God has chosen that's the key word right there, chosen. And these are the individuals that the Lord wants to hear from. You may be that one that God's been knocking on your heart for quite some time. And he says, now I need you to accept that my son died on the cross to save you. No more fighting, no more arguing. My son died on the cross. To save you. And you can't come to Yahweh. Without. Knowing his son Jesus. Who they denied. Who they crucified. And who some even to this day. Will not acknowledge. That God. Came in human form. To deliver message. After message. And they still won't acknowledge. That when Jesus ascended. The Holy Spirit was left behind, according to Acts. And that's who we tap into. That's who we talk to, pray, you know, come. He comes over our spirit, the comforter.
I thank you, Lord. The believer knows the Holy Spirit. The believer knows Jesus. The believer knows God. And the believer also knows that they're all in one. Isaiah 55, 6, 8 and 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay? God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Sometimes, yes, when we're explaining some things, you know, we will talk in such a way where it sounds like God is like us, right? But God is not like us. God has some things that are similar because of course he created us, but no, we think that God doing something like taking someone's child home prematurely is a bad thing. And meanwhile, in the spiritual realm, we know that that is an awesome thing if it's going to win many souls to Christ. It's an awesome thing that a child is released from the pressures of this world after struggling for so long. Why would a parent be so selfish as to say, okay, I want you to be here. I want you to be here knowing that that child is dying. And God has no plan on bringing that child back to life. And sometimes people forget what they've prayed. People forget what they secretly wish for anyway. And the Lord says, you do know that you were talking about how this was a burden and you were talking about how you wouldn't be able to make it and wouldn't be able to help this child if they became an invalid and all this other stuff. And so God, he releases a parent and then they want to talk about how bad God is. And he's like, wait a minute, if you want to talk about bad, how about what you were saying and what you were feeling? Oh, you knew about that. Absolutely. They see God, but they don't want to seek the things that are disturbing about God. Hmm. God allowed these bears to come out of the mountains and kill some kids for teasing one of his prophets who had a bald head. Okay. And that's in the scriptures. God allowed a woman who was married to a weak partner to go ahead and orchestrate this plan to get another man's property and that man whose property that she wanted she made sure that that man died that's Jezebel and then her husband Ahab God he permits a lot of things and we say wait a minute God allowed men to hide after murdering folk. That's in the scripture. And there are still men to this day who get away with murdering some folks. At least that's the way it looks to us. But we don't know what's going on inside that man's mind, his heart, why he would even do such a thing. But God knows. I struggle with the fact that God could have stopped rapes. He could have stopped people from bearing children that had all sorts of disabilities he could have stopped a person from getting into a car wreck he could have stopped a person from dying prematurely but he went on and allowed these things to happen and he didn't give me rhymes and reasons as to why all of these happen all this stuff happened to so many different people. Sometimes I got information and that information is sat well with me. And other times I got nothing. And those things still are a bit disturbing. But all of this disturbing information also causes me to fear the Lord too. <laughs> Lord Jesus. 
James 1 5 if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of God who gives it who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him well I need wisdom Lord Jesus about some things and the Lord says okay let's talk Make me understand the way of your precepts, so shall I meditate on your wonderful works. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. Psalm 119, 27, 34, 73, 98, 104, and 105, and 125. You can find this information in those Psalms. David was struggling with quite a few things, including the fact that there was a man chasing him. But he trusted God. He believed God. He had faith in God. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. As long as I'm reading the word, I'm praying. I keep coming back to the Lord. I got a heavy heart or what have you. The Lord will keep working with a mere vessel like myself. But when you abandon God, when you think you know so much, when you are just doing your own thing, when you allow other people to take you away from the Lord, this is when the trouble starts up. Lord, why did this happen? Lord, I don't understand. The Lord says, if you were sticking it out with me, I could have given you the strength. I could have given you some kind of insight, signs, wonders, anything to prepare you for what is ahead. But you chose to ignore me, mm, Lord Jesus. You chose to ignore me. So what was I supposed to do? There were people who God in all his grace and mercy gave them warnings before bad things happened. And they went on and they drove anyway. And they went on and ended up in somebody's house anyway. And they showed up at work on a day when some stuff really went down when they didn't have to. And God was still speaking. And he told some individuals, he said that this isn't where you need to be, but she decides to get drunk and use some drugs and then some bad stuff happens. Or this isn't where your parents should have left you. And so rather than your parents listening and being obedient and doing the right thing, a child gets raped, Lord Jesus, a child gets abused. Those parents were responsible, but yet they did not want to answer the call. Oh, she'll be okay. I'm going to go to work anyway. Oh, he'll be all right. I got things to do. We got individuals who they don't care where their people go or what their people say or what their people do. They don't caution them. Then when something bad happens, I should have said something. I should have done something. God said, <laughs> How many times do I have to keep knocking on people's hearts, letting them know this isn't the time to make the move. This isn't what you should say. You might as well be quiet on this. Wait, 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 says the Lord. Somebody says, no, no, no. Okay, then you reap the consequences. I'm warning somebody today, the very thing that God has been speaking to you about using people, places, and things. And you're like, why, oh, why does God keep warning me about this? Or maybe you don't even attribute it to God. You just say, why, why do people keep saying the same thing? It's because you need to do something. If it's illegal, immoral, you don't do it. If it's that thing that, you should have done like yesterday to help somebody, but you chose not to because you're still bitter, resentful, angry. You should do it. Your blessing might be right around the corner. You may not have any of those negative emotions. You just procrastinate or you're lazy. The Lord says, this is your time to move, move to give, move to go somewhere that's different. Move to work on a new hobby. Move to ask somebody for some money that they owe you. Move to pick up the phone and call and get a cost savings of some sort. 
Proverbs 2, 6 through 7, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. That's what he is, isn't he? Hallelujah. He's a shield. See, they said some negative things about some of you all, right? Whoever they is. And so you said, Lord, I need your help. The Lord says, I will raise up a shield. Come on. Because you're walking up rightly. You could have said something. You could have done something real nasty, real negative, real dark, but you chose not to. So I'm going to bring about my shield to protect you while I deal with your enemy. Hallelujah. You see, God, he does deal with enemies. That is part of God's way. Vengeance is mine. God leads, God guides, God restores one's heart, mind, body, spirit. God is still in the business of miracles, signs, wonders. Oh, so God can send me a sign. Yes, he can. Oh, well, God, he can heal. Yes, he can. Uh, but God can also take away too. Yes, he can. God giveth and God taketh away. <laughs> As much as we want things to play out in the way we want them, God says that no, not today, not next week or not next year, because I know what the future is. You don't. This is another reason why many of us draw near to the Lord, because he knows what's around the corner. We don't. If it wasn't for God, you know how many corners I would have went around and met the devil himself. Some of you all, if it wasn't for God, you know how many accidents you would have been in? If it wasn't for God, do you know how many opportunities you would have missed? If it wasn't for God, some of your relatives wouldn't still be above ground. But it's God's grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. That's all of our prayer today. Psalm 25, 5. Lead me in your truth. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Truth comes in all forms. On this channel, I talk about so many different types of truth. Truth that people haven't even begun to explore, even considered. And they're like, oh my goodness, this triggers some thought. Oh, this is right. Oh, I haven't dealt with this issue. Oh, this is the cause of my problem. And once they get free, the next thing you know, they're doing what God wants them to do. Because ultimately, that's what these messages cause you to do. Let's get rid of the dysfunction. Let's get rid of the toxic stuff. And once we get rid of that, then you can be able to make room for God to be able to teach you his ways, show you what you need to do during this lesson last period of your life for many of you all this is the this is home run this is home stretch right this is the last hoorah for many of you all depending on what industry you're in depending on what time period of life you're in how old you are and you might as well finish strong Strong in Christ, that is. Some folks, well, I was strong successfully, financially. This, look, no. <laughs> Remember, God's thoughts are different from ours. He wants you to finish strong before you end up in your grave where you're not going to be able to do anything. You won't. It's over. It's done. Rest in peace. Finish strong. Finish this race strong. So that at the end of this race, my good and faithful servant, welcome. Ecclesiastes 7.25, I applied my heart to know, to search and seek out wisdom and the reason for things. I'm in total agreement with the scripture because that's what I did. And that's what I continue to do when I'm totally at a loss. When I don't understand, when I can't see my way there's God he says you know why because you're using my way your way right and he says I don't want you to use your way I want you to use my way because my way is better not my human way right but God's way I applied my heart to know I had to take my heart off a of man and woman and mama and daddy and what was going on here, there and everywhere. And I applied my heart to know, to search and seek out wisdom and the reason for things. They didn't want to give me the reason. 
out the workplace. They don't want to give you a reason. When you were growing up as a child, they didn't want to give you a reason. Go ahead on. You don't need to know nothing. Just take you behind one. They didn't want to give you a reason when you were involved with this one and that one. Married, not married. I need a reason as to why things went the way they went. And God says, oh, I'm glad you're here. Let's talk about the marriage. Let's talk about the family. Let's talk about the business, the spirituality, where you are right now spiritually. Let's get down to the truth rather than you keep persuading yourself that the lie is the truth because it's not. That's what the enemy wants. That's what followers of the enemy want. That's what the wayward want because this way they don't need to be held accountable. You don't need to know the truth. What you might find out might hurt you. So I go to the Lord. I said, I said, let me talk to the Lord. I'm going to apply my heart. I'm going to apply my heart to know. I want to know. I want to know about so many different things. To search. We can internet search. Come on. But we can also search, search the one true God, pick his mind and seek out wisdom. There's the wisdom in the book. There's the wisdom that God speaks to you in the spiritual realm. There's the wisdom through signs, symbols, and wonders. And what is the reason for these things that I'm going through? What are, what are the reason um, why some folks are going through like they're going through? What, what, why do I need to do this or why do I need to do that? See, the questions start coming. The who, the what, the when, the where, the why. God says, I got time. You got time for me? <laughs> Come on. Some folks, they can spend three hours watching a movie, but they can't. Sit three minutes still to listen to something spiritual, much less 60 minutes. <laughs> but God, hallelujah. I'm seeking the Lord this day, somebody says, and I'm going to take these burdens years of burdens and give them over to the one true God. I need to get some understanding. I want my mind intact. I want to be able to go where I need to go and be of sound mind. I'm tired of these individuals who are out to kill, to steal, to destroy. I want to rest in you. Knowing that I'm going to have a good night's sleep. I'm going to feel safe. Lord, that's what I need. Just tell the Lord, whatever it is. I'm just giving you some examples. Because for some people, it's been a while since you really had a heart to heart with the Lord. It's been a while since you, had, you know, wrote down questions about the things that trouble you and sought God on those answers. Somebody needs to do that exercise. Write down those questions, the burdens of your heart. And let the Lord lead you. And I'm telling you, he will. I have gone back to things I wrote and filled in the answers. <laughs> Such a relief. I know why now. I know why. Okay. Yes, that's right. Ah, that's, oh, I forgot about that one. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And now you're no longer bound. You're no longer worried. You're no longer, as I've said in so many audio, chasing after the wind. Some of you all need to get say goodbye to dad. That's your problem right there. You esteem the earthly father more than you would ever esteem the heavenly father. Some of you others, you will esteem that mother, but you won't even give a thought concerning God. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thank you in advance. Blessings to you.